perfect Work hard and determined It's safe to say I earned it well Hey guys It's online school week two So today is the first day of unit seven um, which means that we're going to be doing some new content, which is exciting, on this very new platform. Since we're all such diligent scholars, I know that we all have our notebooks open already, and we have pens and pencils in our hands, and we're ready to take a bunch of notes on our brand new unit. Unit 7 is all about electricity and magnetism. Today is Unit 7 Lesson 1. Your notes should be titled, Introduction to Static Electricity. You should remember this from chemistry, but we're just going to do some quick review about um, what exactly an atom is and what are the parts of an atom. So atoms are made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Um, protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, and neutrons, of course, are neutral. And you have protons and neutrons um, in the nucleus, and then you have electrons um, orbiting outside of the nucleus. So now that we know um, the nature of matter, right, we know all the basic parts of the atom and their charges, we're going to talk about how objects actually become charged. So in certain situations, um, electrons can be either added or removed from an atom, which causes the atom to develop a positive or negative charge. And it's important to note that you never have a transfer or exchange of protons. You only have electrons that are joining or leaving an atom. So only electrons are transferred. Um, and then electrically neutral objects are going to have an equal number of protons and electrons, right? So their charges balance out. Objects can become negatively charged if they gain excess electrons. So if you have more electrons than protons, right, that's going to give you um, a net negative charge. Objects can become positively charged if they lose electrons, um, leaving them with more protons than electrons. So in that case, um, you lost a negative charge, so you're going to have excess positive charge, giving you a net positive charge. And then we have this other process called polarization, wherein um, you're not actually losing electrons or gaining electrons. Um, you have an electrically neutral object but electrons are just redistributing within that object, creating a partial positive and a partial negative portion of the object. So one side will be slightly negative and one side will be partially positive as a result of this um, distribution or redistribution rather of charge. We also have this idea of conservation of charge. So charge, just like energy or momentum is a conserved quantity which means that charge cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred between objects. So with enough energy, electrons can actually be removed from an object. Um, since charge is a conserved quantity, it's not like these electrons just vanish into thin air, right? Charge is conserved. So um, they actually end up transferring to another object, which then becomes negatively charged. So what is the result of an object becoming charged? What happens to a charged object? Well, if two charged objects come into contact, they experience an electrostatic force. And electrostatic force is somewhat similar to gravity in that it is an at or a distance force um, that can cause attraction. However, it's different from gravity in that electrostatic force can cause both attraction and repulsion. So if we have two objects of a like charge, for example, or like partial charges, um, they're going to repel each other. So if we have two negatively charged objects coming into contact, they're going to repel each other, mean, meaning they're going to kind of push each other in the opposite direction. The same is true for two positively charged objects. Um, and then if you have an two objects of, um, excuse me, oh my god. If you have two objects of unlike or opposite charge or partial charge, those are going to be attracted to each other. So if you have a positively charged object and a negatively charged object, they're going to experience an attractive electrostatic force, meaning they will be pulled towards each other. So 
So we're going to start by talking about one key application or one key example of electrostatic force um, that we actually experience a lot in everyday life. So if you've ever been like walking around the house in your socks and then you touch a metal doorknob and you feel shock, um, that is one example of something called the triboelectric effect. The triboelectric effect um, is when objects are charged by friction or by rubbing up against one another. So this friction um, causes enough energy input to transfer charge from one object to another. So when you're rubbing your socks against a carpet, for example, um, charge is transferred, electrons are transferred from the carpet to your socks. So you, in effect, become um, charged. And the result of this effect is static electricity. So static electricity occurs when there's a buildup of charge on an object. And this charge will eventually flow to another object, neutralizing the charge. So you rub your um, socks on the carpet and you in effect become negatively charged because um, electrons move from the carpet to your socks. When you touch a metal door handle, the electrons leave your body and you feel a shock. So we're gonna look at this other example in a little bit more detail because it also helps us understand the concept of polarization. So make sure you're writing this example down. This is one of my favorite examples of the triboelectric effect. Um, look how funny this little cat here looks. Um, so basically what happens is you have a cat who's walking around the house, you know, rubbing up against door frames, people's pant legs, um, rolling all over the floor, doing whatever it is that cats do. So all this friction causes electrons to transfer to the cat's fur. So in effect, the cat, or the cat's fur rather, becomes negatively charged due to a buildup of static electricity. When the cat gets into this box of packing peanuts here, which is, I suppose, what we can assume just happened, um, these packing peanuts each become polarized. So when you have this negative charge on the cat's fur um, and that negative charge comes into contact with the packing peanuts, um, the negative charge on the cat's fur, that static electricity, actually repels the electrons within the packing peanuts. So within the packing peanut itself, due to this repulsion, the charges redistribute, right? The electrons flee to the other side of the packing peanut and the charges redistribute so that the side closest to the cat's fur actually has a po partial positive charge. Once that side closest to the cat's fur is positive, we see that opposites attract. The cat's fur still is essentially negative and so the packing peanuts are gonna stick to the cat's fur. 